Hi everybody, it's Sue here from the March Hair Studio. I've just got a little crafty idea which I'd like to share with you today. Now, if you've met me, you may know that one of my favourite shops is HomeSense. And it was while I was in HomeSense, having a route through all the Christmas decoration bargains, that I came across this lovely box frame. It's one of those, you see them quite a lot at the moment. Um, you can hang it on the wall, or because it's got a very wide edge, it can stand up on its own. Although they tend to have messages on, or pictures, it doesn't matter what that is, because we're going to cover over it. And to cover over it, I'm going to use some wrapping paper. Now, I do confess I'm a bit of a devil when it comes to buying wrapping paper, even when I have no presents to wrap. If it's a lovely design, I can't resist buying it. So I'm sure when you see this gorgeous flamingo paper, you'll understand why I just had to buy it. Now, to make sure we make the most out of our wrapping paper, and we don't waste any or use the wrong parts, I suggest to begin with, you draw around your frame onto a piece of paper and cut out a window. And then you can use this as a guide to finding the best parts of the wrapping paper to use. Move your frame across the paper until you're happy with the part that's inside the cutout because this will be the paper which will be stuck onto your picture frame. Use a pencil to lightly mark where the sides of the frame are. When cutting out your paper rectangle, leave a margin of about 3 centimetres around the edge. The next thing we're going to do now is squirt some PVA glue over the top of our picture. Work from the centre out, smoothing with your hand. It's really important that you remove any air bubbles or any excess glue from underneath the paper. And I find a knitting needle really useful for this. If you haven't got a knitting needle, just have a look around the house and I'm sure you'll find something similar. You may have to use one hand to hold the block down and just squeeze out as much of that glue and as much of those air bubbles as you can. Really pressing on hard because the last thing that we want is a bumpy surface when the paper dries. When you're happy that the surface is as smooth as possible then, just leave it to dry. It's on the safe side. I've left it overnight and I know now it is perfectly dry for the next stage. And this is the best bit. I love this bit. Because what we're going to do, we're going to take a sharp pair of scissors and we're going to cut away the excess paper. So here goes. Now, I think I've nearly cut all the paper off. I've just got one or two edges which I can't quite get to with my scissors so I'm going to use a craft knife for one of these so if you have to do the same just make sure that you take care and you're very careful with it and always cut away from yourself. And I think now we're actually there. Da -da! A lovely picture to either stand on a shelf or hang on a wall. And what's great is that you can really personalise these pictures depending on the papers that you use. You may or may not want to varnish your final picture. That's entirely up to you. If you do decide to add some varnish, think about using acrylic varnish because it dries pretty clear. Some varnishes can add a yellow tinge and it spoils the artwork slightly. I hope you've enjoyed watching this project and I hope 
you might be tempted to give it a go. And if you do, please, I'd love to see some of the pictures that you make.